What's happening, my fellow women's soccer slash football fans? Welcome to another episode of the Women's Soccer slash Football Podcast. I'm Bryce, and welcome to another Wednesday episode of Filling Us on a Wednesday again this week. We got a good show again for you guys here today. And for all those of you who are new, who are returning, I'm just happy you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Guys, if you are new to the podcast or just like a little bit more information, we're also on TikTok, Instagram, on the like. And if you like what you're hearing, seeing, feel, feel free to comment, subscribe, like, whatever you do to support your podcast or write us on Apple Podcast. I see one person did. And from me to you, my friend, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And also... We are on Spotify and the like as well. I'll link all those down in the description below for you to view at your leisure. Or if you're on the go, you're in the car and you're bored and you want something to listen to, we got you covered. Well, guys, a lot of good stuff is going to go down this week. Been a lighter week in terms of content and news. Not really a whole ton has been going on leading up to the She Believes Cup. Other than some roster news, some WCL games being played, but we talked a lot about that on Sunday. Some of this might be a little bit of repeat, but just bear with me because the She Believes Cup is happening this week and we are super, super excited for it to go down. It begins in T minus 24 hours, it looks like. So here we go. Welcome. Uh, let's talk into our first setting the scene of the day. So it is, what day is it today? Wednesday, February 17th at approximately 4.50 p.m. in the afternoon. We just got 14 inches of snow where I'm currently at in the Midwest right now. I know, 14 inches sounds like a lot, and believe me, it is. My car, my house, was covered in snow. It's still covered in snow. It'll probably be covered in snow until the end of time, but that's neither here nor there because I like the snow and I like winter to an extent, but that was just wild shoveling it. It was unbelievable. Uh, my strip lights are still blue. I just haven't felt like changing the color yet, so there's that for those of you who are uh, watching on YouTube. I'll give you a little show there. There it is. For those of you who are listening on audio, just use your imagination. Uh, what else is going down? It it felt like 10 degrees today, which has been the high for like two weeks now. On, on average, it's usually like negative three. So uh, things are looking up. Things are looking up and things are going good. But that is setting the scene. So without further ado, let's get into our first segments. For those of you who are new to the podcast, I like to start off the show by getting into some smaller segments where we just kind of catch you up on all the things going on in the world of Woe So, and then we'll get into some main topics where we'll dive deep, deep, deep into different topics and just uh, break it down. So let's get into the first segment, which is going to be, drum roll please, the Women's Footballer of the Week. For this particular segment, I love to just pick one women's footballer who I think has shined for any reason throughout the week, whether it be through charity work, just killing it in the games, or doing all kinds of great stuff. This is what this segment is for. For this week, the Women's Football of the Week is... Dramatic pause. Dramatic pause. FC Barcelona Women's Football Club. Guys, the reason why I'm picking the entire squad for the Women's Football of the Week is because they are 16-0-0 in La Liga uh, Feminine this season. That's right, you heard me. 16 wins, 0 draws, 0 losses. They are perfect this season and what's really going to knock your socks off is that they have scored 81 goals and only allowed wait for it wait for it three count them three goals through in all 16 games that they've played so far so they've scored 81 and have only allowed three that is more the amount of goals that they have scored is more than double i believe of the team in second which i believe is getafe if I'm not mistaken, somebody will have to fact check, fact check me on that in the comments, which I do appreciate, by the way. Um, so yeah, they have just been bossing it. They have been on an insane run. And for that, they are my women's footballers of the week. Guys, who is your women's footballer of the week? Feel free to jump down in the comments below and let me know who your pick is. All right, guys, let's get into the second segment, which is just going to be the weekly recap. For this segment, I like to just catch you up on all the woe so news are as much Woso news as possible throughout the week between the Sunday episode and the Thursday episode. So let's get into the weekly recap. For those of you who may not have already heard or have watched my previous podcast episode, the Boston Breakers and Sky Blue have been cited in a visa fraud conspiracy case that was initiated by Global Premier Soccer, a former, a former youth development 
soccer organization, I guess is a good way to put it. They're defunct now. They no longer exist, but their COO, Justin Capel, was charged with a visa fraud conspiracy. Basically, how that went down is Global Premier Soccer wanted to bring in 100 coaches from abroad into the United States. Well, to do that, you need to get them visas. So they couldn't do it, so they thought they'd involve their friends at Boston Breakers and Sky Blue FC. And basically, what Sky Blue FC and Boston Breakers would do is they would sign these coaches to uh, contracts with the club to be professional scouts for the Boston Breakers and Sky Blue FC. But as it turns out, these scouts, what they would do is they would never report to the teams and they would just work under Global Premier Soccer uh, as an unofficial capacity, which, by my understanding, is pretty illegal. But this story involves a lot of high-profile names like politicians, former governors, owner, former owners, etc. so forth. So this is a developing story. We'll have to see how it progresses from here on out. It should be really interesting, though. It could go very, very deep from the pundits that I've been listening to as of late, so stay tuned for that. On the flip side of the coin, let's get into some good news. We have two new parents in the world of woe, so congratulations to the Honorable. They're numbers uh, 17 on the field, maybe, 17 and 20-something. I can't remember the numbers. The point is Ashlyn Harris and Allie Krieger, otherwise known as Clash- Crashlin, are now parents. That's right. They have adopted a baby and have named, I believe, her Sloan Phillips Harris Krieger. Yes, that's right. She was born on February 12th, 2021, so just a few days ago. And congrats to them because that's super exciting. Another chapter in their lives. I believe that she got married in the last few years and now they have a child together. Big things are happening in the Harris Krieger family. So congrats to them. What a wild time to be alive. Moving on into other European football news, the Champions League round of 16 draw just took place, I believe, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. So here are the matchups. I'm going to probably butcher almost all of these names, so just kind of bear with me on this one, guys. Uh, First match, VFL Wolfsburg of Germany squares off against LSK Vinner FK, which is of Norway. Second match... Excuse me, FC Barcelona of Spain against Fortuna Joring of Denmark. Third match, FC Rosengard of Sweden against SKN St. Polten Thron of Austria. Fourth match, WFC BIIK Kazigurt of Kazakhstan takes off against FC Bayern Munich of Germany. Fifth match, Manchester City of England squares off against ACF Fiorentina of Italy. Sixth match, AC Sparta Praha of Czech Republic squares off against PSG, otherwise known as Paris Saint-Germain of France. And then Olympic Lyonnais, also of France, squares off against Braun BIF of Denmark. Next, Chelsea FC takes on Atletico Madrid of Spain. There are a ton of awesome matchups, guys. They're going to go on in this Champions League draw. I can't wait to see how it is going to go down and how it's going to square off. If you're looking for one of the matches to watch, in my opinion, the Chelsea-Atletico Madrid match is probably going to be the favorite one to watch for this particular round of 16. Now, I I posted a hot take yesterday on TikTok and Instagram that predicted that Manchester City would not only win the FAWSL, but also the Champions League for this particular year. And I stand by that. I think Manchester City are going to walk away from the Champions League victorious. If I had to pick a second pick, it'd probably be Barcelona for the aforementioned reasons that they are undefeated and kicking butt in La Liga right now. So that is the Champions League round of 16 draw. What do you make of the draws, guys? Feel free to jump down in the comments below and let me know who your champion will be. Moving on into, I believe, the last bit of news for the week. Like I said, news was pretty light this week. The She Believe Cup, the She Believes Cup kicks off today. This podcast episode is going to air on Thursday, February 18th, which is when it will start. So, correct. Today, February 18th, the She Believes Cup kicks off. It'll start with Brazil against Argentina at 4 p.m. Eastern, and then the United States and Canada will square off a few hours later at 7 p.m. Eastern. Moving into the second match day, which is going to be Sunday, February 21st, the United States will take on Brazil at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and then Argentina and Canada will face off at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Then moving on into the third and final match day, which is going to take place Wednesday, February 24th. Canada and Brazil are going to take each other on at 4 p.m. And then United States and Argentina will close up play at 7 p.m. Eastern that night. These are my final standings predictions for the tournament. I think the United States will come away winning the tournament. Second place will be Brazil. 
Third place will be Canada, and fourth place will be Argentina. So, guys, what are your final standings predictions for the She Believes Cup? Are you going to be watching it? Are you excited? Whatever you think, feel free to comment below and let me know who you got. All right, guys, so let's get into the third and final segment of this podcast episode, which is my new favorite segment, which is like, which is what I like to call the moment of silence. This is where we just take a moment and dedicate these few moments to just anything in the world of Woso that you would like, anything you appreciate, whether it's Caroline Weir's goal, whether you got a favorite player like Tobin Heath, my favorite player is Tobin Heath too, or if you just want to celebrate anything that's on your mind, the moment of silence is the perfect time to do that. So, for this week's moment of silence, I'm going to be dedicating mine to the honorable, the one and only Crashlin, Ashlyn Harrison, Ali Krieger, the newest parents in Woso, and congratulations on their very own new family, including Sloan Phillips, Harris Krieger. So, on the count of three, ladies and gentlemen, feel free to join me in the moment of silence. One, two, three. Salute. All right, guys, thanks for joining into the moment of silence. Who did you pick up or what moment did you pick for your moment of silence? Feel free to let me know down in the comments below at your leisure. All right, guys. So we have made it through the segments for this podcast episode, which means it is time for the lovely main topics. This is going to be a relatively short list today. We're going to mainly focus on the She Believes Cup. So I don't want to keep you guys waiting. Let's get right into it. Let's get into our first main topic, which is going to be a U.S. Women's National Team versus Canada match preview that's right. As I said before, the United States Women's National Team and Canada will square off today, February 18th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on FS1. And it should be an exciting match. The U.S.-Canada rivalry is one of my favorite ones. It's always a good time to experience. It's usually a physical matchup, and CONCACAF has been evidence of that in the past. Uh, some noteworthy news for both squads. Uh, Alana Cook is no longer participating in the She Believes Cup, for those of you who don't know. She plays for PSG, which is in the French League, and they have denied her her international duty to uh, go over to the States and play in the She Believes Cup. FIFA has a new rule where if a player leaves for international duty and it would require them to come back and have more than five days of quarantine, the team can waive their, I guess, not really right, but their, their international duty and keep them in the domestic league. So PSG has exercised that option. They are not allowing Alana Cook to go over and play in the She Believes Cup. So the U.S. have filled her spot with, I believe it was Casey Kruger. Yep, it was Casey Kruger, formerly known as Casey Short because she got married. Um, I just want to re-emphasize here that the club with the new FIFA laws are able to do that, whether it's right or wrong, who's to say. All I will say is PSG are kind of competing for a league title, so it makes a ton of sense, and at least Alana Cook this way can still compete for a really big trophy, because if they triumph over Olympic Lyonnais in Division One Feminine, that's going to be one for the story, because that hasn't happened in a while. Um, some other Canadian roster news. We actually have quite a few players from Canada who will be missing out on the She Believes Cup tournament because of injuries, and actually for the same reasons that Alana Cook's going to be missing, specifically Kadisha Buchanan is going to be missing out of the She Believes Cup. She plays for Olympic Lyonnais, which is in the same league as PSG. PSG and Olympic Lyonnais are obviously in the same situation in France. So Olympic Lyonnais has said, all right, Kadisha, we're not going to let you go over for international duty. We need you here. We can't afford to let you go away for international duty and then lose you for another week. Um, that's just a lot of precious points, and it shows that they value Kadisha really highly. So she will not be participating in the tournament. In addition to that, Jordan Huitema of PSG, actually Alana Cook's teammate, ironically enough, she's also out for the same reason Alana Cook is. And the same goes for Ashley Lawrence, also teammate of Alana Cook and Jordan Huitema. She is also out due to the um, PSG exercising their right to not allow her to go or report for international duty. Then moving into some more injuries, Aaron McLeod and Bianca St. George and also the pro most prolific goal scorer in women's soccer of all time, Christine Sinclair. All three of them are out due to injuries. They all picked up injuries, I believe, earlier on in camp. And that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles. It's a really big bummer for Canada because Christine Sinclair, obviously having the world's most prolific goal scorer is going to be damaging. But then to have seven of your key players who are playing overseas and in other really good leagues out that always sucks that's never a good time so my heart goes out to all those players and also Canada too because that they will definitely be missed but with all the roster news down and out of the way 
let's do a U.S. Women's National Team starting 11 prediction. Actually, really quick before I get into the prediction, I'm sorry, guys. I almost forgot to mention Sam U.S. also will not be playing in the tournament. Her ankle injury has not progressed as far along as they originally thought it did, so she's going to be resting in Manchester, and Jaylene Howell will take her place in the squad. Whew, excuse me, I just sneezed really quick. But now, the U.S. Women's National Team starting 11 prediction, or at least my prediction for this particular matchup, is starting goal, we've got the Honorable Alyssa Nair. In defense, at the right-back position, we've got Kelly O'Hara. Playing alongside Kelly O'Hara is going to be the Honorable Abby Dahlkemper of Manchester City in the central defense position. To the left of Abby Dahlkemper is going to be, oh, Captain, my Captain, Captain America, that is Becky Sauerbrunn, the other central defensive player in the squad. Then on the left back position, we are going to have one of the world's most versatile players and skilled players and an amazing defender in person, Crystal Dunn, playing on the left back position. Moving on up to the midfield, we've got in the holding midfield, Madam Julie Ertz, the force to be reckoned with, the world beater of the women's midfield. She controls any midfield she touches. It's kind of amazing. Then we've also got on the left center midfield position, Lindsay Horan. And then on the right center mid position, we've got Rose Lovell. Then starting at the forward line, I'm going to go with Megan Rapino on the left wing, Alex Morgan in the striking position, and then the honorable Kristen Press out on the right wing. And these are my sub predictions. I predict Carly Lloyd, Sam, or actually Sam Mewis is no longer in the squad, so scratch that. Carly Lloyd, Katarina Macario, Christy Mewis, Emily Son, and Mitch Purse, I believe, will all be subbed on for this particular match. I would not be surprised if uh, Casey Kruger maybe came on as well as a third defender. Perhaps another midfielder will come on. Who knows? It's going to be really interesting to see how this all sort of goes down. I believe they get six subs for these friendlies, so who knows? Though That's my starting 11 prediction, guys. What is your starting 11 prediction? Feel free to jump down in the comments below and let me know who you think is going to get picked up some other big news too if you're wondering where tobin heath is in this roster in case you haven't heard she has been diagnosed with an angle injury and she's still nursing that and will probably be out for another eight weeks at least by my calculation i could be wrong on that too i'm no doctor but that's just kind of where she's at right now um I thought it would be worthwhile to not only examine the u.s uh starting 11 but also kind of give you guys who Canada has in the roster. Part of my goal with the accounts that I run in my YouTube channel is to kind of educate you guys on the world of women's football and women's soccer in general. And I don't think it'd be fair of me to only speak to who's on the U.S. roster, but it also give you a glimpse on the other side of the coin, who's on the Canadian roster. So I'm just going to give you a little rundown about that real quick. Who does Canada have in the roster? If I'm not mistaken, this is a list current as of a couple days ago, but we've got Janine Becky, the forward out of Manchester City. If you are in tune with the WSL, you've likely seen Janine Becky. She's amazing. Kadisha Buchanan, who is a defender. She is over at Olympic Leonese right now, so obviously she is not going to be playing in this tournament. Samantha Chang, the midfielder who attends the University of South Carolina, so we have some collegiate players in here. Alicia Chapman of Houston Dash. Jesse Fleming of Chelsea. Riley Foster, the goalkeeper out of Liverpool of the FA Women's Championship. Vanessa Giles of Bordeaux of Division One Feminine. She also plays in the French League, just like some of her Canadian uh, counterparts. Julia Grosso, the midfielder out of the University of Texas, another collegiate player. Then we've got Jordan Huitema, who is the forward out of PSG. Like I said, she's still over in France, so she will not be participating. Stephanie Lab, the goalkeeper out of Rosengard, which is the Champions League team out of Sweden. Ashley Lawrence, who is the midfielder slash defender out of PSG. Adriana Leon, who is the midfielder forward out of West Ham's United of the WSL. Jordan Leistro, the midfielder out of the Orlando Pride. Diana Matheson, the midfielder out of Kansas City. Aaron McLeod, who is actually injured now, the goalkeeper out of the Orlando Pride. Nichelle Prince, the forward from the Honorable Houston Dash. Quinn, who is the midfielder from OL Reign. Jade Riviere, who is a forward from the University of Michigan. Jade Rose, who is a midfielder from Super REX Ontario. Sophie Schmidt, the midfielder out of the Houston Dash. Desiree Scott, the midfielder out of Kansas City, which is their, this is their first season since becoming, since coming from being the Royals, so that should be really interesting and really exciting to see. Uh, Kaylin Sheridan, the star stud goalkeeper from Sky Blue, and Christine Sinclair, the all-time women's goal scorer and forward for the Portland Thorns, like I said, out with an injury. Olivia Smith, Super REX Ontario. And fun fact, Olivia Smith is the youngest player in Canadian women's football history. 
And actually, I believe in just in general, the net youngest Canadian player to ever debut for a uh, country. So really exciting stuff. I believe it was at 15 years, oh, 307 days or something like that. She debuted for the international team. So wow, crazy stuff. Then Bianca St. George, the defender from the Chicago Red Stars, who is also out with an injury. Evelyn Vaines from Sky Blue. She's on loan currently to Paris FC. I believe not to be confused with PSG, if I'm not mistaken. And then Shalina Zadorsky, the defender from Tottenham. I believe she used to play for the Orlando Pride until she signed a permanent deal. So there's that as well. Guys, that is your Canadian roster. Anybody I might have been missing, feel free to jump down in the comments below and let me know. However, with all that and down and out of the way, what is going to be my scoreline prediction for this particular matchup? I have got United States winning this one by a scoreline of 4 to nil. Originally, when I was making the notes for this episode, I had them down at 2 to nil. However, with the seven injuries that Canada has undergone and with the way the U.S. has been playing lately, I think that's going to be a very uh, one-sided result. So I think the U.S. is going to score 4 I'm going to make a note of that real quick. I think this friendly is going to look a lot like the game against the Netherlands a couple months ago, where the U.S. really dominated the midfield. They created a lot of chances. The other team had like nearly no shots to speak of throughout the game. I believe they held the Netherlands to two shots, and neither of which were on goal. I anticipate that will happen again, especially without Christine Sinclair in the forward line. Uh, I think that... I think Canada usually gives the U.S. a pretty good match. I think they'll still give them a good match, but not as much as we're really hoping for, so I think the U.S. will by and large dominate this one. But who do I think is going to score? I like to have a little bit of fun with this. Who do I think is going to score and when? This is always a fun one to kind of go through. I think that the first goal of the game is going to come from Julia Ertz off a corn in the third minute. The second goal will come in the 21st minute off of Rose Lavelle's left foot from outside the penalty area. That'll be really exciting. The third goal is going to come off from Carly Lloyd, who's going to be subbed on in the 71st minute. 71st minute. She will score in the 71st minute because she's had a lot of chances uh, as of late, especially in the friendlies against Columbia. She'll be itching for a chance, and when she gets it, she will make the most of it. Then last but not least, we'll have Katarina Macario score again in the 87th minute. She'll be subbed on sometime throughout the game, and she'll score in the 87th minute for a second international goal. So, guys... That is my scoreline prediction. That's who I think is going to be scoring. Do you think my predictions will be right? If they go right, I should start buying lottery tickets. So what is your scoreline prediction going to be? Feel free to jump down in the comments below and let me know what your thoughts are. All right, guys. So that actually just about does it for the first main topic. The only other tidbit I can think of from that main topic is that I think Argentina and Brazil, I think Brazil is going to win that one by a scoreline of 2 to nil. Houston Hage has always had a good reputation for being an awesome coach and having a good squad. And with Marta being the GOAT and Dabini out on the field, they're definitely going to be scoring. And Argentina is a younger squad with a little less experience. So I think I've got Brazil winning that one 2 0 as well. So, guys, with the first main topic out of the way, let's get into the second main topic. The second main topic is it actually comes from a TikTok question that I got the other day. I'm paraphrasing here, so for forgive me. And I'm sorry if I can't remember your account's name. I had it written down and I accidentally erased my notes. But thank you for the question. This is almost like pseudo mailbag, but it's coming from TikTok this time around. The question basically is, is okay, Ashlyn Harris and Allie Krieger are new parents, which bodes a whole ton of new challenges, and it's really exciting for them. In the microcosm that is women's football, what does it mean for them in the U.S. Women's National Team going forward? Which I will, I will, uh, I just want to be clear here. Obviously, the number one thought on my mind isn't like, oh, like, how does this affect their staying with the team? First and foremost, I'm super happy for them that they have a new family. It's absolutely fantastic and phenomenal. It's just in this little microcosm of life, what does their future look like with this team? And that's a really valid question, and it, it posts some interesting things in the thoughts, or interesting thoughts of the squad kind of going forward, especially with the Olympics coming up. Will they play again? Will they want to play again? Will they play in the Olympics? The reality is, is I guess the short answer to this question would be, I don't really know. I don't really know because I don't know Ashlyn Harris and Ella Krieger all that well. I obviously don't know them personally, so I don't really know what's on their mind. And plus, since they just had their baby a few days ago, I can't really definitively say for sure um, what their future is going to be like. However, however, doesn't mean that we can't examine some of the options that might go through. 
So the way I see it, based off of what's been going down, there's been two different possibilities that we can explore here. And this is based off of the assumption, this is predicated on the assumption that Ashlyn Harris and Allie Krieger would be picked for the Olympic roster as of today. Right now, they're going to the Olympics for the summer. There's two options. One, they could play. Two, they could not play. They could forego the Olympics. They could just call it a day. Now, let's explore option one first. They could just play as normal, which, if that happens, how does my roster prediction change? It doesn't. It doesn't at all. What was my initial roster prediction? This is what it was. I've got Alyssa Nair, Ashlyn Harris as my goalkeepers. Then as my defenders, I've got Crystal Dunn, Kelly O'Hara, Abby Dahlkemper, Becky Sarbrun, and Emily Sonnet, and Allie Krieger. Then, moving on up to the midfield, I've got Katarina Macario, Sam Mewis, Lindsay Horan, Rose Lavelle, and also Julie Ertz. Why am I forgetting Julie Ertz? I shouldn't forget those things. And then the forward line, I've got Carly Lloyd, Megan Rapino, Tobin Heath, Kristen Press, and Alex Morgan. That is my original roster prediction for the Olympics this summer. And if Ashlyn and Allie keep with the plan and decide to play, then that, that stands. That does not change for me whatsoever. The more interesting question comes with what happens if they forego the Olympics? What if they just decide to hang up like, okay, nope, we're not going to play. Love our family too much. There's just a lot going on. We can't handle it, which nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. I obviously, I, I, my parents had to raise me and my brothers and that had to suck. So I could totally imagine that. I mean, it didn't suck, but a lot going on, just, you know, a lot going on when you got a new family. So totally get it. But anyways, I digress. If that happens, how does my roster prediction change? Well, after the change, I see two different options kind of going down here. Here's option one. I see a listener and Jane Campbell as our goalkeepers. I see Crystal Dunn, Kelly O'Hara, Becky Sauerbrunn, and Abby Dahlkemper and Emily Sonnet and Tierney Davidson as the six defenders that Black is going to take. I see Katarina Macario, Sam Mewis, Rose Lavelle, Julie Ertz, and Lindsay Horan as the midfielders. Then in the forward line, I see Carly Lloyd, Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, Tobin Heath, and Kristen Press. That would be the first option. I want to be clear, that would be the first option that I could see happening. The second option I can see happening is Alyssa Nair, Jane Campbell's the goalkeepers, Crystal Dunn, Kelly O'Hara, Becky Sarbrun, Abby Dahlkemper, and Emily Sonnet as the five defenders. Then I can see Katarina Macario, Sam Mewis, Rose Lavelle, Julie Ertz, and Lindsay Horan as the midfielders. Then I can see Carly Lloyd, Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, Tobin Heath, Kristen Press, and lastly, Lynn Williams. I can see either of those two options going down. Now, before everyone gets really, really upset and is asking me, why would you pick Lynn Williams? She's not a very skilled forward. She can't finish. La da 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 da. Trust me, I, I'm with you. I don't think she can finish either. I'm kind of on the same side in this particular case. Not that I don't think she's an excellent player. I think she's a phenomenal player. But the reality is, is I want to be clear. There is a difference between what I would do and what I think Vlatko will do. Vlatko obviously is the grand mastermind tactician with a plan here, and I'm just some random guy on YouTube who supports the OSM Snatch team and Woso in general. So option one was what I what I would do is the squad I think would be most likely. Option two is the Vlatko version that I think he actually might go with should Ashlyn and Ali forego the Olympics. Now I just want to I just want to uh reinforce what the options one and options two were. Basically, option one included Tierna Davidson in defense. Option two included Lynn Williams in the forward line. That's basically the main difference between the two options. Which option would I prefer? I would prefer option one. Me, personally speaking, from an outsider as the US Women's National Team fan, I think Tierna Davidson is the future of the US Women's National Team defense, or at least one piece of it, along with Alana Cook, because I think Alana's going to have a lot to offer, especially with their experience at PSG. And I think that that would provide a lot more benefit, especially since Tierna has some World Cup experience. I think that would provide a lot more benefit than it would be to bring in Lynn Williams. Because here's the thing. 
with for me the main and really only benefit that Lynn Williams can provide, or at least provides in Vladko's system that I've seen, is her effective ability to really get into that high press. She's really, really good at it. And she can put pressure on a team in their own defending third, which doesn't really happen very often. It really sticks with the US philosophy, US's philosophy of stomping on the gas pedal and not stopping. It's really impressive, actually. But if, if, if that's Vlatko's prerogative and that's what he wants to go with, if he wants to just have Lynn Williams for that sole purpose of her running the high press system, that's his prerogative. He can do so. Do I think that he'll do it? I think there's a chance. I would put five bucks on it that he actually might do that. Would I say it's a really high likelihood? Who knows, really? Who knows? Only time is going to tell. Just to kind of recap it, guys, if Ashley and Allie do end up foregoing the Olympics with their new family going down into this world, um, the way I see it is Vladko is either going to take Tierna Davidson to replace Krieger, or he's going to take Lynn Williams as an additional forward into the line. No matter what, if if Ashlyn doesn't come back into the fold, I think Jane Campbell will be the backup keeper. But with that in mind, um, I would say that the better option would be to take Sharon Davidson, she's the future, rather than Lynn Williams, who can provide you that high press um, benefit. But, like I said, that's just one man's take. Vladko is the end-all be-all for that, and he's a really brilliant tactician. He's got a gifted mind. All right, guys, so that'll do it for main topic number two, and that actually will bring us to the very end of the episode. Like I said earlier, this is a shorter episode. Just because of the She Believes Cup coming on, we'll get a whole ton of content as the week progresses. So, guys, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for again visiting the uh, the, the Women's Soccer Slash Football Podcast. We are on TikTok, Instagram, and we're also on audio on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of which I will link down in the description below for you to view at your pleasure. If you like what you're hearing and seeing, feel free to share this with your friends and subscribe, like, comment, so people just like you are able to follow women's soccer content like this and get involved in the fandom so guys i've been bryce this has been the women's soccer slash football podcast and i really look forward to seeing you in the very next episode but until then have a great day